Hey bag ladies and bag dudes, I'm Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Ask Sarah, my weekly Q&A chat. Hey everybody, happy Tuesday. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Ask Sarah. If you are watching this previous Social Sunday show, I apologize if you made it to the end. I was sort of having a coughing fit at the end. Obviously, I'm, I'm totally fine. Danny, however, made me watch in slow motion the very end of the show, oh so I got God. to see it yesterday. It was not slow <laughs> so I got to see several times how my face slowly turned red. I started to choke, and so um, I learned my lesson. Danny and I both decided I should have keep some water, even if I'm not drinking anything during the show, just in case of emergencies. So I don't know if that's ever happened to you before, but sometimes I just get that little tickle in my throat. And uh, especially if it's dry, which it is kind of right now in winter because we have the heat on. Um, but uh, that's just what happened. And thankfully, it was at the end of the show and not sort of in the middle um, or in the middle of a demonstration. But um, it all worked OK. Um, we got I got my giveaway question out and, and the show was fine. So I was sitting on the couch with William after school while he was working on his homework. Um, I did take a shower right before the show. But when I was sitting on the couch with him, he said, you know, Mom, no offense, but you smell like a stable. And I was like, you know, obviously wearing my clothes from the stable. I was around horses and yeah, I did smell like a stable. And I said, thanks, William, you know, and it's okay. I'm not offended, but I took a shower right after that. Anyway, today I'm super excited because I have a special guest on the show tonight. Um, my friend, Pat Sloan, who is, Pat is one of those people, and I'm sure many of you have this person in your life, but um, Pat knows everything about sewing and quilting. She's one of those people that seems to have dabbled in just about everything that's quilt related. Uh, she's a quilt pattern designer, author, designs fabric. She does it all. So um, I am super excited to introduce you to my friend, Pat Sloan. Welcome to the show, Pat. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Hi, hi. <laughs> nice uh, to see you. Um, so I'm excited and I know my viewers are because I saw them chatting beforehand on Facebook and YouTube and I wanted to kick off the show by talking about, um, well having you talk about one of my most favorite stories that I've ever heard you tell and this is a story about your first quilt. So if you wouldn't mind sharing uh, that story as sort of an icebreaker, kind of a get to know you. Yeah, yeah everybody starts somewhere. I guess that's a uh... That's how it feels, right? Right, Sarah? You, uh, you, we don't start out making and knowing everything. And I learned to sew in high school. You know, I did uh, that sort of, you know, garment making, which basically I tell people I sewed clothing badly, like really badly. <laughs> I was not any good at it. Uh, so you've heard, you've heard, you heard me talk about my my first my first first quilt. Uh, so my. Um, my in our apartment we decided that you know we got a new apartment i thought i'm going to make a bedspread and so i went to the fabric store and i told them i wanted to make a quilt because i seen greg's grandmother's quilt and so i had like this pattern and i made this like the giant no i mean you can't, you can't a giant star uh and um it was horrible <laughs> you know it was like surprise <laughs> yeah i, I pictures of like, you know, you can see that the points, you know, worked and I didn't know anything I was doing. So then I, uh, they told me how to put batting in it. And I didn't know what, I didn't know how to quilt. So I didn't know what batting was. So they handed me this big roll of white stuff. And, and I thought, well, I remember Greg's grandmother did yarn. You know, have you seen the quilts tied with yarn? Oh, right. So yeah. I, I, yeah. So I thought, well, I will just do like my mom did. Cause I don't know what that is, but so I tied it about every four feet. Like <laughs> huge, huge space, and of course we washed it. And then later on, the dog, um, like there's like this big blue spot on it now. And when okay, I we're gonna people, put the yeah, we're gonna put the photo on the screen right now, yeah. so Pat can explain it. Oh, I can't. Blue thing. Uh, <laughs> That blue thing. Did anybody guess? Or did anybody try to guess? It's a uh, so so. It's it's not um, it's not duct tape. It's not an applique. You know, continent I put on there. It's actually a hole in the quilt, 
And so you're looking through the quilt and that is the backing. So there's, um, you know, you can see the backing. So that oh, I always you, said. Cause you tied it. So the, it was through the fur, the top and the, the batting right. and there's the backing there. Okay. So this big old hole there. And so I decided to like baste it shut all around. So the batting wouldn't keep coming out. And, and then, um, you know, I also, this is my first quilt. So I also decided that, you know, what would I use for the backing of my first quilt? Because, you know, there's a, this is a big space. And I thought, I am not going to sew anything up. So I did. I used a sheet for the back. And I, you know how they have, you know how they have the piping, like, like, you know, along the edge, the piping? I left that on there. So I just left the piping <laughs> right on the backing. It's, uh, I still have this quilt. It's sad. <laughs> I'm laughing, but not in fun because I've made some quilts with, uh, and this was years ago, but with, you know, sheets from the thrift store. So kind of a similar thing, but yeah, um, I'm guilty, you yeah, know, I'm guilty of using the sheets too. <laughs> yeah, nobody told me, you know how they had that pretty fold over you. It's like, oh, I'll just leave it on there. Cause I don't, it's big enough. It's like, <laughs> it made sense at the time <laughs> it did it did i was learning i didn't make another quilt though for a long time that did not, for some reason that did not inspire me to continue quilting i don't know <laughs> well i'm glad you somehow made your way back to it so um next i was wondering kind of along that same line of thinking but what was your job before you were a full-time pattern designer and fabric designer and what made you decide to transition to be a full-time designer after working that previous job? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm a, I'm a geek. So that's, uh, I have to, <laughs> yay, yay. yay, Danny, yay for geeks. Now I have a degree in computer science. And so out of college, I worked for, um, I worked in computers. So basically I did really geeky stuff. I wrote, I wrote code. So for those of you who know what that means, I wrote all the directions for those of you who don't. So I, I told the computer what to do in English-like wording. So, and then eventually I was a manager and a manager's manager. So I did that for about 18 years. And I, um, at the end I had about a uh, staff of about 40 people and worked a lot, I did a lot of project management. So it was a lot of scheduling and a lot of people's, you know, what were they, what are they doing? It's, it's that kind of shuffling and juggling of of everything so that was my my first life <laughs> so now i see why you're so good at uh tackling all these quilt related things because you've done something similar as far as managing people and managing lots of different tasks in a previous life that makes sense right right i'm really comfortable managing a lot of different things and running a lot of different things and having all these balls in the air all the time you know that is something that is what i've always done um so I, I, I know how to keep track of things. So that's, uh, that's sort of uh, comfortable. But, you know, one of the, Sarah, one of the things I always wanted to do was own my own business. Like, as a little kid, I wanted to own wow. my own business. And as soon as I had my real first real job out of college, I was trying to figure out how to get out of it in the beginning and have my own <laughs> business. <laughs> but, but I, you know, I was pretty young. I um, I went to school early because of my age. I was in school and out of school fairly early. And so I, I think you need experience sometimes. And also there was no internet at all. So trying to figure out what I would do. I worked for some um, small computer businesses, but eventually when I learned to quilt, I loved doing this so much that I started learning about the business side of the quilting and thought, well, this is an area I think I can do this. I think I can. It took almost 40 years. <laughs> it's like I was almost 40 by the time I, I think I was 40 by the time I started this. So, you know, I had one whole full career and this is basically, I'm now on uh, about 19 years full time in this, in this business. So. Okay. So. I as as you know, Danny and I work together full time, and I know that you and your husband Greg also work together full time on your business. So I was wondering, what's that like? What's the very best thing, your favorite thing about working together, and what's your least favorite thing, or maybe something that gets on your nerves about working together? <laughs> well, I, 
I, I always joke about this, um, you know, that it works because we, we don't work in the same level of the house, like <laughs> his office. <laughs> and Danny works right here, so we're always together. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. He's cannot right, yeah. <laughs> we, we do, I mean, work style wise, we're, we're just as opposite as can be. Like I probably, if I wouldn't have hired him in my computer days because his style is like nothing I wanted, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but, but you know, we basically have different areas of the company. He does all the back office stuff, you know, and I do all the other stuff. Um, but yeah, it works because uh, that part, we'd stay on different, you know, we, we keep our, our areas separate. We don't really do things so much together. Yeah, so there he is. There's the, I call him the shipping department. His name is Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, wait, you know, remember, do you remember, Sarah, way back when the sort of internet started, then people wrote on their blogs, they would name, like, give their family members names that weren't real, like, yes, right, they would say daughter number one, or, or, you know, give their kid a name or their husband or their mom, you know, like favorite mom, you know, so I just started calling him the shipping department. And, uh, <laughs> I like that. one day somebody <laughs> said to me, you have a whole shipping department. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's the whole department so so what is what is that i would say what is the worst thing is our styles we took a long time because our styles are different it doesn't take him a long time just took me a long time you know he's fine he's very easy going with me i'm like ah you know but then the best thing is being able to work together we we have really compatible styles for like travel and for um making things happen you know so he can do all the stuff that i'm not good at like accounting you know and i just this is just not <laughs> you just do not want me to do the accounting and uh and you know he does a lot of the um uh, event planning things that we do and a lot all the web web maintenance stuff i do the writing but he does sort of all that back stuff that needs to be okay. done his background's electrical engineering, and he was actually a tech writer for um, military aircraft and then electronics wow. and all that kind of stuff. That was his first career. Oh, awesome. So. Yeah, Danny and I differ because Danny's the math person, and I'm the, I guess, the writer, designer, and I feel things more emotionally. Like, I'll, I'll often say, like, I just... I have this idea, and I just have a, a feeling about it, and he'll be like, well, no, we got to look at the numbers, and... It doesn't matter what you feel about it. Like, you know, we got to talk about this realistically. So that's how we differ in the business, at least. Yeah, I just, yeah, don't listen, Danny. Don't listen. What I, I just, <laughs> I just do it and then tell him it's done. You know, like, I've already done this. This is what I'm doing. It's too, like, late well, yeah, too late now. Yeah, too late now, yeah. You can always beg forgiveness afterwards. That's yeah, that's true. That sounds good to me. Sounds like a plan. So Pat has written nearly 40 books. She has actually a brand new book coming out this March. And, um, oh, there's a question from YouTube. Evelyn says, I have worked with my husband for 34 years and married 36 years in our jewelry store. The worst is vacation. You have to take separate ones. I like that, oh. Evelyn. Oh, no. But you said you like to travel with Greg, right? You like going on vacations. I do. I do. We're really, really good travel partners. That's probably something that amazed us because we didn't do a lot of travel prior. We just took a couple of vacations, you know, in that first sort of life. But when we, we travel for work, it's it's working plus, you know, in, in the car and all the just all the things we found out that that is something we're super compatible. We like doing things the same way. We we um, travel kind of at the same level. So what we're doing suits us both. Okay. And we're also, yeah, we're also pretty organized. We're both pretty organized where we like to know and what we're getting all, like where are we staying? What are the places to eat? You know, like it sounds sort of structured, but it works when you do this so much. Then there's no surprises. You go and it's what you're expecting and then you can relax. You can enjoy, enjoy it more. For us, that works. Yeah, I'm the same way. I always like to know what's going on. So yeah. um, back to the book. Pat has a new book coming out in March, and we have some photographs to share with you. So Danny put together a little slideshow Celebrate of uh, Celebrate the Seasons. Um, we're going to show the book cover and then some of the projects from the book, not all of them. But um, if, Pat, you could tell us 
about um, a little bit about the book, and then I want to ask you about um, something about book writing after that. Okay. Okay. So I'll tell you about the book. Um, I've written a lot of how-to books, like they're called Teach Me series, and I had not written a probably a strictly pattern book for a while. So I talked to Martin Gale, who is my amazing editor. Martin Gale, that Patchwork Place are the same company, if you hear both those names. So I told Martin Gale that, you know, one of the things I do is I love seasonal decorating. I love to change things out. I don't always want them to be so um, holiday oriented because then they have a little shorter um, lifespan. I love holiday as well, but I thought, what about a seasonal book? And that's what we came up with. And today, Sarah, today, 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 I got my advanced copy. This is it. This is it. That's an exciting day to hold a physical book in your hand. I know, I know, I know. It's like so exciting. But I have um, each season, there is a group of projects. And so the projects are um, different sizes. So you might have a wall hanging and then a table runner and maybe a pillow so that you can sort of decorate with that uh, instead of like, you know, a whole big room full of zillion things. It's kind of like three things per season, three to four things. Okay. Even as small as like a mug rug or, or something else like like there with the, so you see the table runner, and then there's placemats that go with that. I, I loved doing that tulips because I lived in Europe. And when I lived there, we went to the Kuchenhof um, tulips in, uh, in Holland. So I don't know if you've heard of that, but they're beautiful gardens up there. And so I have, I really wanted to do something with tulips and some of them have hearts in them inside the tulip, peace heart. So. It's like one of my favorites in there. And there's a winter one that's amazing. Here, do you want to see the winter one? I can show oh, yeah, you from the I'd book. Yeah, I'd love to. And are you taking so pre-orders on your website for signed copies? Because I know you've done yeah. it in the past. Not right now. Not okay. right now. I don't have anything set up for that. But here is... Here, oh, I love see. that. Oh, yeah, that's so beautiful. The, got some light shining on it. Ah, sorry. Where is it? No, we can see there it. We... I can see it fine, at least. Here, okay. For a second, I'll make her full so, screen. Okay. Yeah, so that's the the Nordic winter. It's got the the full size quilt and then the wall hanging is one block with a little border around it. Okay. So it's a it's a lot of it's a lot of strip piecing, but it's all you know just strips. So it's um it's a pretty neat project. It's kind of one of those you need to think about because you got to follow the diagrams real well to get all of that spaced out properly. But that's why I wrote the book so that you have it. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, so I'm super looking forward to getting that. I have several other titles of your previously authored books. Oh, thank you. And so I was curious, do you have a funny story about maybe the writing process or something surprising that happened while you were writing one of your past books? Yeah, I've written, I've written this is like 37 books. This is number 37. So, um, you know, so, so over that time, a lot of times it's pretty, pretty normal stuff. But one year, I think this is kind of funny because it's, it's typical. This is where, you know, Danny would probably say, oh, no, we have to sit down and talk about this. Is this going to work into the schedule? <laughs> and instead, I just said yes. Uh, so what happened is my publishers, the previous ones, Leisure Arts, and I already had two books I was working on sort of at the same time. And that was crazy enough. And they contacted me and said, um, we have this idea for a beginner book and it should be hand piecing. And I, I, I actually learned to quilt by hand piecing. So I was like, okay with that. And they said, yeah, but we want to do it now. And I'm like, we're already working on these other ones. And they said, well, we'll help you. And so I talked, <laughs> to one of my, I talked to one of my girlfriends and they were like, are you nuts? You're not even hand piecing now, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, I called them back and I'm like, yeah, sure. Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> so I did like, I had like three books going on at the same time. And then it turns out, you know, they wrote most of the book, um, the, that publisher for that book. And so they actually had hand piecing and machine piecing in it. Um, uh, but it was sort of nutty to say yes, because I was doing a lot of travel and had to have a lot of help to work on those. <laughs> oh, there's a question from Lisa. She says, yeah. I have not made a quilt yet, but would love to. Where should I start? Do you have a beginner book? I do have a beginner book. It's called Teach Me to Make My First Quilt. 
So um, it's got photo step outs, just like you would watch, um, just like you would read at a blog or like if you're looking at Sarah's stuff when she does photo step outs, you know, it's that kind of a process. So that it's very, very visual. And I take you through everything that you need to know to get started. So. Okay. I actually so. have that book and it's excellent. So yeah, that's a oh. great first place to start. Definitely. Um, so a couple of things that I wanted to, to tell you all about Pat and why I wanted to have her on the show and why she means so much to me. Um, so when I first started my business, uh, I started selling patterns in 2013 was when I first started selling things. And two years prior to that, I started going to industry trade shows. So these were shows that were not open to the public, but they were for um, pattern designers, fabric designers, manufacturers, where they're basically... It was uh, a trade show to sell new products to quilt shops and things like that. So it's called Quilt Market. It's every May and October. And back when I started going, it was very overwhelming being a, a very new designer. I felt like the teeny tiny fish in the big pond. And um, right from the beginning, Pat was always um, interested in uh, what I was working on um, helpful with answering questions and going to some of these trade shows yes there were always lots of nice people but there were also people that were kind would kind of uh when they learned kind of what you were that you were new and what kinds of things you designed would almost sort of talk down to you and uh, it was very reassuring to have someone out there kind of like a uh, like a life raft almost like pat answering questions of course i always had a million questions um and I learned that that was not uh, an isolated incidence because I had her as keynote speaker a couple years ago, and she also taught a couple of lectures at a conference that I co-hosted. It was called SoPro, and uh, the goal of SoPro was to help people that were would like to um, get into the industry somehow, either wanted to be pattern designers or fabric designers, but they didn't know how to get started. So the goal of that SoPro conference was to teach people or give them the tools um, to get their first steps in and make contacts and um, all of that. And Pat was the first teacher that checked in. Uh, she stayed at the check-in table when the attendees were checking in, talking to people, asking them questions, uh, what they were working on, what their goals were, that kind of thing. And I'd never seen anything like that before, someone who was so involved, because uh, clearly at, at, at having written almost 40 books, Pat could have just got, you know, stayed up in her hotel room, taken a hot bath, watched a movie, but she was like down there in it with all of us. And I thought that was really cool. So I just wanted to tell you that. And, um, you know, you still answer my questions to this day. So um, thank you for that. You answer and... mine too. You answer my questions too. <laughs> You're very knowledgeable. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's true, but um, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so speaking of um, I was just mentioning, you know, going to these conferences back in 2011 for me. Um, mm -hmm. What is the biggest change that you've seen for sewists or quilters um, from when you very first started in uh, as a pattern designer or in fabric designer up until now? What's the biggest change that you've that you've seen? Yeah, that, I would say that probably the number one thing, number number one is the amount of people who now are on the internet. Because when I started, I, because of when I started, I, I actually built my first website in 1999. I was working Y2K and I hired one of my staffers who freelanced to, and I paid her a lot of, a lot of money to write like a website that was like three pages, you know, <laughs> that was, and so, but there was nobody there. I mean, you build it and there was nobody to come because there was nobody online. The online was in its infancy. Um, but what, has really changed, I think, for for everybody on all levels, whether it's the the person doing it as a hobby, the businesses, the business side of it, is that there everybody, this is our community now. Our community has gone online. So it's not that you, you know, you can go in person, which is amazing and wonderful if you have that opportunity, but there are so many people who don't. There's nothing locally for them. Uh, nothing where they live that they can do with people that are like-minded. So having that like-minded communities online is, I think, is a game changer for for a lot of people as their hobby. Now they can they can connect to people who do the same thing. People join my group all the time, and they're like, I don't know anybody that quilts. 
I don't know anybody that sews. Um, and you can find friends, just like you have this amazing community of people who want to make gorgeous bags and you teach them. And you really couldn't have done that even 10 years ago like this. You it's, wouldn't have had even a fraction of the people online to teach or right. show them anything. So That's totally true. Yeah, we sure appreciate the, the bag ladies and bag dudes watching. By the way, go ahead and type that in the comments for us right now if you're watching. Um, because we always, I love glancing over and seeing all the bag lady and bag dude comments come through. And I also wanted to let you know, um, if you are looking for a quilt making community similar to the So Sweetness community in that you can have a lot of uh, positive feedback and um, share photos and ask questions, Pat also has a great group. Actually, it's a huge quilting group on Facebook. And I link to that in the description. So if you'd like to join Pat's group, it's quilt with pat sloan and the links in the description i think you'll have a great time there and um i know pat enjoys interacting with her group like i do with mine yeah yeah that's the fun part that's what makes everything so much fun is that you actually get to know people you can recognize you know a lot of people don't even change their profiles very much that's cool so i was like oh i know who that if they change their profiles it's like sometimes i'm lost it's like oh, who was that? <laughs> <laughs> Which Jessica was that, you know? That, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, people have questions about what they're working on, um, and you're able to get answers and help. I mean, just like your community, I'm sure there's uh, all different time zones of people. So, and just people's uh, general body clock, you know, some people are late night, some people early. It's kind of like you ask a question, there's always somebody around. Yeah. That's a good point about that. Okay, so I was now hoping that you could share with everyone your three favorite projects. Uh, we have some photo photos to go along with these three favorite projects, but if you could just tell us a little bit about them and why they're your favorites. Did you want to put the picture up first? And yes, how's that, Danny? Yeah, then I know what. Go order ahead. You, you can have. pick what you can pick one, and Pat will jump in. Okay. Ah. Okay. Yeah. So this one. Um, it, you know, it has like, a, like I call it the Ferris wheel. It also has some other names. I need to find it its real name. I don't know why that's weird, but the, the, the story is, is that, um, when we had give fabric at Moda, the designers were sent, like they run the fabric through these machines to do all the pre-cuts, like the layer cakes and jelly rolls and all that stuff. And then the little shavings and punks fall into this bag or box at the bottom of the machine, at the end of the machine. And then they send the designers that box. And oh, so what cool. I did is I went to my friends and I split up, we split up and everybody got like four pounds of fabric, my friends. Wow. And then we all did a challenge and that was my challenge. They had to use just the strips and ends. And, um, and then we did, we did exhibited them. We have a friend that works at road to California, <clears throat> Stevie Graves and Stevie organized to have them exhibited there. And then they were exhibited to the machine quilting expos. So there was a group of like, uh, 15 quilts that my my friends made and uh, exhibited so that one I just love it because it was fun to make it's not a pattern um, it's basically just big Dresden's done with string quilting so okay that's really cool I didn't know that about the the machines and the the boxes of oh, uh... yeah it's just it's crazy because you get this huge tall box comes in the mail it's like crazy and then you go in there and this is like some of the strips are, are really hardly usable and others come off in big chunks it just depends on what they're cutting they just salesmen's car books you know and all of that so okay yeah. oh, cool all right so danny's gonna cover my face with this quilt <laughs> it's okay i'm just kidding <laughs> i'm just so kidding i have to do overlays Totally fine. Yeah, so this one is um, a pattern I have called Crush, and I have this hanging in my studio, and this is the red version of Crush. The pattern online, it's a digital pattern. It's blue and uh, it's red and aqua, so the background's aqua, but I remade it in the red and white, alternating with the polka dots, and then I just added half square triangles and another two inch strip. So they're two inch half square triangles around the outside. But this was designed, this was um, redrafted from an antique block that had very strange construction. It was done with templates and all this, and the construction was not modern day. So I redrafted it for my pattern and it, they're big blocks. I forget what they are, maybe 16 inch. And I just, I just love this, this version of it in the red and, in red and white. I want to do a blue and white one next. Someday. Okay, cool. 
<laughs> and by the way, um, the links to this, this, the last two projects are linked to in the description. So if you wanted to, to get a pattern um, for that quilt or the next quilt that we're going to be showing, they're linked to in the description. And Pat said the first one was not a pattern. It was just one of her favorites. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so this originally is called Let's Go So, but the original, there was an original backstory to this because I did the Quilt Alliance, um, did a challenge and did an auction and they had a size limit for uh, what you sent in. And I forget what the theme was, but I did this, the middle part of this without the inner border and without the half, you know, the, 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 the triangles on the outside. I did just the sewing machine part because that fit exactly uh, for the criteria for the challenge. And it was auctioned. And my good friend, Sherry, won the bid. And so she owns the original. And then people liked it so much, I decided to make it a pattern. And it is one of my favorites because it's got that vintagey feel, but, and you could make it, you know, with or without the flowers if you're not into applique, but you can sort of make your dream machine, which is what I like. People will make it in like, if they've always wanted a purple sewing machine, they'll make a purple one and you customize it. That's awesome. So. And uh, for sure, I always love a good polka dot. So my eyes were immediately <laughs> drawn to that quilt. <laughs> Yeah, I think the polka dot really helps. It, it, there, everybody can relate. And then if you're not into it, you can think of something else. It doesn't sort of focus you in like maybe a, sometimes a really significant print would be because you might look at that and go, well, I can't get that fabric. But mm -hmm. a polka dot, you're like, I can always get a polka dot. Or maybe yeah, I don't want true. a polka dot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I have one more question for Pat, and then we're going to open the floor up to your live questions. So if you have a question for Pat, uh, go ahead and type that right now on YouTube or Facebook into the comments. And Danny's gonna put some of the questions up on the screen. Pat's gonna answer some of the questions live as many as we can. Um, so go ahead and do that right now. And then I'm gonna ask my last question was, um, oh, I was hoping that Pat could share her favorite sewing or quilting tip with all of you, because as you know, I love sharing notions of the week on my Sunday show and also demonstrations. And I know everyone loves a good sewing or quilting tip. So what's your favorite one, Pat? Well, I have, um, I thought it's to show you two tools. I mean, I just cool. sort of hold them up. I have to grab Excellent. the other one. Hold on one little sec. Yeah, no problem. I didn't, I didn't get it over here in time because this is a fairly, this is a fairly new tool. Um, and what I did is I showed this the other day on something I was doing, but it's a, it's a seam. There's the seam, seam guide, guide. four in one tool. Yeah, okay. It's from So Emma. Okay. And it so does a whole lot of things. Like um, the Fat Quarter Shop is the publisher of So Emma, and they have a video that shows you how to do all this, but it has a whole bunch of holes. Let's see, can you see them? Okay, yeah, yeah, so, yeah so I see. You can do all of you, sort of, if you want to set your needle position, you okay. can put it just right into those holes. Um, you could actually trim with a half square you know, triangle if you want. Okay. Uh, but nice. I love this plus sign. And the plus sign is taking you a quarter inch in from the outer, each outer edge and your binding. When you're doing your binding or anything you need to turn, you need to quarter inch and mark it. Then you can just put that right at the corner and then take a pen through the hole in the middle oh. and make, I'm usually like a Sharpie, make a little dot. Then you can remove the That's ruler. That's super clever. Yeah. So it's a I really like neat, um, seam guide thing you know it's called seam guide and this is really new this just came out and so i've been playing or this is the part i like the best okay yeah, I don't I adjust like my, my, yeah i don't adjust my needle position but also then it's got a ruler if you need right there you know sometimes you need to measure something right when you're at the sewing machine and then this for half square triangle is the other one that's been around forever a million years if i use this ruler for half square triangles i don't know if you can see it the quilt in the day. Quilt in a day. Yeah, I can read that. Yep. Yeah. And what it has is like, if you have a half square triangle folded, then you can do like trim to two and a half or trim to three and a half, or you can flip it if you're doing two, two, three, four. And so you basically trim two sides, you trim up like this, and then you press it open and it's the right size. So you okay. don't have to you know, so you're, you're trimming it when it's still folded before you press the half square oh, triangle. Oh, I see. That sounds a lot easier. Yeah, and it's been around a very long time, um, but I, I like this one a lot. Those are those are kind of two. I'm not a massive tool person, <laughs> but these uh, I thought this they were good. They're good, and I use them. They're ones that I use. 
Okay, um, excellent. Thank you, Pat. All right, so Danny was a little over eager to get to the questions, so <laughs> let's post them on the screen. Barbara says, Hi. do you do the quilting on your quilt tops? Hi, Barbara. Uh, I do some of my quilt tops and then I send some away. And basically it has to do with timing and also I have friends who are very talented um, artists as, well, as far as it comes to putting the layers together. And sometimes what they can do will add greatly to my finished quilt. And so I'd rather have them do it. But a lot of times now it's time. Okay. Uh, Gloria says, uh, hi, Pat, do you also do art quilts or landscape quilts? Gloria, I have done them, um, art quilts and landscapes, but not it's not my go-to thing. So it's not the core of my business, but I have played around with them because I've been quilting for about 25 years. So I've probably tried most everything in that time frame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always fun to dabble. Like I like doing English paper piecing and foundation paper piecing for, yeah. for fun mostly. Um, it's just something to get your mind off of the work for a little while, I think, for me at least. Right. And I've um, made a bag. <laughs> that was I don't make a lot of bags. But... <laughs> Vanessa says, is there a Splendid Sampler 3 in the pipeline at all? And if you're not familiar, I'm sure you are. But um, Pat is the co-author of the Splendid Sampler and the second book in the series, Splendid Sampler 2, which have 100 quilt blocks in each book. Is that right, Pat? Yeah, both, yeah. Yep. 100 blocks in each book, 80 designers, 100 blocks, one of those big organizational projects. Um, Vanessa, no, not right now. Um, it's been a, a, lot, of, a lot of years. <laughs> so <make> it <laughs> uh, Terry says, Pat, have you ever made a bag? Well, Terry, I have, I have, I have not a whole lot though. I'm not a big, I'm not a big, uh, I'm not a bag designer. I mean, I've designed, I've made tote bags, but I have done a few bags. It's just, um, I'd rather have Sarah make them. So. <laughs> Cheryl says, what size quilt do you usually like to make? I make a lot of um, laps, lap, uh, lap size quilts and they also hang on the wall because I make a lot of quilts to hang on the wall. I, I like to look at what I've done. Um, I actually started to quilt. My whole concept was to put things on the wall. So uh, if it's too big, then you can't see the whole thing on the wall. That's true. Do you rotate them out in your house if you're hanging them on I a do. wall? How often do you rotate them out? Um, probably seasonally, you know, okay. like, yeah. So if I get a chance, I might do something a little bit more than that, but usually about three, four times a year. Okay. That sounds fair. Yeah. Barbara says, Pat, you showed the Gemini. Did you like it? I do. I love the Gemini. Gemini is by Crafter's Companion. It is a um, die cut machine and I am loving it. It's just, it's so, it's so neat. It works for my brain. It's, I like how it's, uh, how it cuts. If anybody wanted to see that Gemini that Pat was talking about, it's on your Facebook page. Is that correct, Pat? Yeah. If they wanted to see yeah. that, a video? Okay. Video, yeah. Awesome. Um, Pat says, uh, Pat Sloan, if you couldn't sew anymore, what would you do instead? Oh, like crafting wise? Crafting wise, I'd probably crochet or I might learn to, I'm going to learn to cross stitch. That's one thing I'm going to try because I haven't done a lot of that. I do embroidery. I also like to garden and travel. So, but. Don't take my sewing away. This would not be a good thing. <laughs> yeah, I feel the same way. Kim yeah, says, do uh, do uh, Pat, do you have a YouTube, uh, YouTube videos for your quilts? I have a YouTube channel, yep. And um, it's called Pat Sloan. Just look for Pat Sloan on YouTube. I've had YouTube out there for, I don't know, 15 years or so. Long time. Um, Kate says, which book has the sewing machine quilt? Um, I've actually linked to that sewing machine quilt in the description. So if you're interested in that pattern, it's a standalone pattern, right? Pat? It's standalone. Yeah. And that's yeah. linked to in the description in case you're interested in purchasing that pattern. And Lisa says, what is your favorite sewing machine to use? Ah, I work with baby lock. And so I have the, I've had the crescendo, which is an amazing machine. I have the destiny Two right now. And I just had an email today that the Solaris is being shipped. So that's the newest one. It's like exciting. Oh, exciting to get a new machine. Yeah, very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Jill says, what is the easiest quilt uh, to make that is fast? Ah, well, Jill, guess what? I have a quilt for you. I have, it's a free one. It's called Oh My Stars. It's with charm packs. And there's a few stars, which are just sew and flip. 
uh, and then an easy border. So you can go to my um, free pattern page and find it. Okay, and what was the name of that quilt again? Oh My Stars. Oh My Stars, and it's free and charm packs. That sounds really good to me, so you just get right to sewing. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Tina says, Pat, how did you transition from your geek job to your creative job? Um, and same question to Sarah. I'll let you go first, <laughs> Pat. <laughs> well, I started uh, dabbling in teaching. Like I worked my day job, my, you know, my full-time job, and then I started teaching in quilt shops and uh, to see if I liked it. I didn't work in quilt shops. I wasn't like a retailer part. I was teaching. And then I made store models. One of the shops asked me to make store models. And then... I decided to try pattern writing. So I did pattern writing and then I still have my day job. And I went to the trade show that Sarah talked about earlier and I had a booth and I still had a full-time job. And I then ran both my new business while I was working my main business for two years uh, before I decided to quit. So Okay. Yeah, mine was kind of similar, but on a less impressive level. So I worked at pet stores for 14 years. Um, uh, it was full time at one point, but after I had the kids and I was staying home with the kids, I was only working weekends. So I was making like $300 a month, which that's, you know, as soon as my paychecks came in, they were gone right away because I wasn't making very much. And so um, I started writing patterns in 2013, January. So the beginning of the year. And then the plan was as soon as I could um, reliably and consistently make enough money uh, to equal what I was making at the pet store, then mm -hmm. I would uh, do the designing full time. And um, it took me the full year to build everything up because it was, you know, word of mouth and getting the word out. But eventually mm -hmm. I made it happen and it was really scary. I actually remember I can picture it in my head, me and Danny sitting on the couch and talking about it for a couple hours and I was really worried like what if I quit my job and then this doesn't work out what am I gonna do and I just decided you know just take the jump for it and I'm glad I did it it's really changed my life and I've met so many fantastic people in the sewing world since mm -hmm. then and on Facebook and through the live shows so I'm so thankful for it um, Gretchen says I need a tip for enlarging my six and a half inch um, SS blo uh, Splendid Sampler blocks, some are not quite six and a half inches due to applique. Okay, so Gretchen, probably what the easiest way is if your block is not six and a half and you want to get it up to a size, um, mm -hmm. is to put a little mini border around it. So I would put a mini border around all four sides and then center it and when you know, make it a little bigger you know, put the, a little bit bigger mini border, then take a ruler and center the six and a half, get it real perfect and then trim around. So I would also then press your seams towards the block because otherwise if your seams are out, when you're trying, you're, you're probably not making very much of an inner border. You might only have like a quarter of an inch or, or less. So you wanna press those seams in from the mini border so they're not stuck into where you're sewing it to the next blocks. Oh, good tip. Uh, Laura says, what batting do you prefer to use in your quilts? Yeah, batting, batting, batting. Uh, there's, <laughs> there's lots of battings, and I've used lots of battings. Um, I've used a lot of Mountain Mist, which is a really um, traditional batting that's a batting company that's been around forever and ever and ever, and I love Mountain Mist. I also love uh, the Happy Cloud batting. I think it's a really, really nice batting. Those are probably the two that I use the most. Um, Happy Cloud is brand that is at the Fat Quarter Shop. Okay, interesting. Um, Sheila says, I may have missed it, but when is your new book going to be available? March, 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 March. <laughs> so not that long, pretty soon. Yeah, just a In few March. weeks, really, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Teresa says, hello, Pat, I enjoy your fireside chats. Are you planning on continuing those? Yep, I just did one the other day, Teresa. I, I don't do them as like Sarah does and Danny with their consistent time frames. It just doesn't happen for me. I consistently do a radio show on Mondays on my podcast, but the fireside chats I do usually once a week or once every week and a half. So I just did one on Sunday, I think. And where can people find the fireside chats if they're interested, on if Facebook. they've not? Facebook? Okay, Facebook. Pat's Facebook and page? Also my YouTube on my YouTube also. And so, Pat also glad. briefly mentioned just a second ago her podcast, and it's called um, American Patchwork and Quilting Radio, correct, Pat? 
And yeah. um, I feel like Pat has been doing podcasts before they were cool. So she's been doing her pod her show for so long, having guests every week, and that's Mondays, right? Uh, late afternoon yeah. on Mondays. Mondays afternoons, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I yeah, I did I did it before anybody knew what a podcast was. People didn't even understand yeah. what they were. They'd be constantly like, "How do I watch it? You know, where is it? What channel of my car do I turn it on?" So it's like, <laughs> I, it's, I know, really, it's like, no, it's not in your car unless you have Sirius or something. It's not even there. But no, it's um, it's year number nine. This is year number nine. Wow. For that's so cool. And I feel like podcasts are such a huge thing now. I admit I was super reluctant to get on the po podcast bandwagon, but now I started listening to a few regularly, including yours. And it's like, what, what, why was I so reluctant? And I was just like digging my heels and like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do this. But now I'm like, <laughs> I go in the car. I don't even listen to the radio. I'm like podcast. <laughs> yes. um, Anita, radio shows. <laughs> yeah. Anita had a question. Do you ever just flip turn inside out with no binding on a quilt? Is this something that you hate? Well, I don't hate anything. There's reasons and purposes for anything people do. And if uh, personally, I don't do that. I don't feel like I have control over the final product. It's not going to be the final product that I want using that method, but there's nothing wrong with that method. It just comes out the way it does. Um, I wanna have the quilting done and I want, and, and if you so, flip and sew like that, you're, you can't do the same level of quilting unless you're gonna really work to keep it flat. And then there's like a, like a whole, it seems like a whole other extra level of work to get the outcome I personally would want. But to sew and flip and then maybe you're gonna tie it or you're maybe you're just gonna stitch in the ditch, something easy. You just have to be really careful. You've got a flat or you're gonna get um, puckers and creases and things like that. Cause it may not be quite as flat. Okay, that makes sense. Um, Pat says, is the Sloan bag named after you? It yes. Is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> the secret it, Pam? Did you make it? <laughs> the secret's out. It is the Sloan travel bag. And we'll have a video for that bag uh, later this year. So excited ah. for that. Had a lot of requests for that one. Doreen says, Pat, how do you hang your quilt? So that's a good question. For the bigger quilts that I have spaces that are always hanging a quilt, I use a curtain rod. So I just get regular, regular curtain rod, something that looks kind of nice and hang that. And if I'm doing like little projects that I'm just sticking up and taking down because I sort of maneuver things around a lot, I, this is bad. Don't tell anybody. I'll tell you the secret, but don't, shh, don't tell anybody. I just use, <laughs> I use straight pins. Like these things here, like, can you see these over here? They're straight pins. I just stick them in there. So okay. then, I'll, then I'll change them, you know, it's just not worth it for me to do. I mean, some people use command strips on stuff. I'm like, yeah, straight pins. <laughs> for your uh, curtain rods, do you use little clips or do you have a sleeve or how do you? Sleeve. I do sleeve? a sleeve. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I like them to hang really straight around the, along the top. So like the clips are, they're going to dip like a, right. like a curtain. They're yes. not made like a curtain. They're too firm. So I, I always use a rod pocket. Okay. Very interesting. Danny, is that it for the questions? Okay, Danny's calling in on the questions. So um, thank you all for watching. Um, thank you, Pat, especially for being on the show. I admit I was super nervous because we haven't had many guests. It's usually just me and Danny on Tuesdays. And uh, if I mess up on the Tuesday show with Danny, I'll hear it from him afterwards, but that's about <laughs> it. Um, but thank you for being on the show, Pat. I really appreciate it. And if you liked Pat's um, sort of interview tonight, if you want to check out more of her, her upcoming book or her patterns, fabrics, other projects, the link to her website's in the description. Her Facebook page link is also in there as well as links to a few of the other projects that we talked about. So um, thank you again, Pat, so much. I really appreciate thank you. you. <laughs> All right, so this has been Ask Sarah. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, I'll see you again this Sunday for Social Sunday. Have a great week and happy sewing, everybody. Bye-bye.